There is a breaking in order for there to be a one. Let me tell you something. When God is about to do something big and mighty, there is a breaking and a shaking that must take place. Now God had to move some people out of the way so he could do what he needed to do through the Holy Ghost. Many believers love God, they love the things of God, they love to hear about God, but when God really began to move, they don't understand, Lord, why are you doing what you do? They don't understand, Lord, why are you moving the way you're moving? They don't understand, Lord, why am I going through this or why am I going through that? But God had a purpose and he has a purpose in mind. He, his purpose is not necessarily what you want, it's not necessarily what you're looking for, and nine times out of ten, you're not going to understand why he moves the way he moves. Amen? Amen? Look at verse number one in Acts, the second chapter. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. They were all with one accord in one what? They were in one place. Now, that looks simple because it gives you the impression that they were in one room. But I want to take you to another mansion. They were not just in one room, one room or in one place in one room, but they were in one place in their spirit. In order for the Holy Spirit to dominate you, you've got to be in one place in your spirit as well as you are in your mind. So although they were in one place, they were just not in one place present, but they were in one place in spirit. Unity can only happen when your spirit agree. If there's no agreement in the spirit, there's really no agreement. And then walls. They were in unity and they were on one accord. Now notice something. That accord is very, very important then. Because that means they were in harmony. They were in sync. You got these little devices on your phone that says, sync here, sync this, sync that. They were in sync. They were ready for what God had to offer. Now notice something. The Holy Spirit could not come until they were in sync. They were in unity. They were on one accord. So God has a purpose and a plan for the believer, but they all must be in sync. They all must be in unity, and they all must be on one accord. Jesus cannot return until everybody's speaking the same language. Everybody's teaching the gospel of the kingdom, not just gospel, not just preaching, but they're flowing in signs, wonders, and miracles, and demonstrations. Then Jesus can return because everybody will be in unity. It won't be anything about the Baptist, the Methodist, the Presbyterian, the Catholic, all these different denominations, but everybody will be teaching and preaching the same language. They will be teaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. The gospel of the kingdom of God is signs, wonders, and miracles flowing in the natural as well as the supernatural. Amen, Lord? Look at verse number two. It says, and suddenly, Notice something. This happened spontaneously. This is one of those unexpected, you know, I got this one off a few minutes ago. This is one of those unexpected suddenlies. And suddenly something happened. Suddenly there came a sound. Notice the Holy Spirit moves when there's a sound. A sound from heaven. Now, go back to one accord in one place. They had to be to the place on one accord that heaven heard them. They had to be on one accord to the extent that heaven could hear them in sync. Now, when you're on one accord to the extent that heaven can hear you in sync, heaven can respond. Heaven can reply. Many times we ask God to move on this or to move on that, but we're not really in sync. One brother's praying in their will and another brother's praying in their will, so everybody's not in total unity, everybody's not in total agreement. So heaven can't really reply to your request, but as soon as everybody gets on one accord, here comes heaven. And heaven will say, hello, what did you say? Did you call me? Are you seeking me? Are you looking for me? Heaven will begin to say, okay, here I am. Okay, I'm ready for you now. Amen, walls. Now listen. In Acts the second chapter, in verse number two, it says, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, 
as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all where they were sitting. It filled all where they were sitting. It filled not just them, but it filled all where they were sitting. That means that there was so much Holy Ghost in that room that you couldn't have gotten away from it. It filled all where they were. In other words, there was so much Holy Ghost in that room. Jesus didn't just send the Holy Spirit, but he sent so much they could not control it. That's how you want the Holy Ghost. You want it to the extent you cannot control it. Because eventually you will get to the place where you will begin to control it. That's okay to lose control for a season. That's okay to lose control for a while. That's okay to not be able to control what you may be going through when the Holy Spirit begins to take over you. Just let it have you for a season. Just let it have you for a little while. Because he might do some things that you don't understand. But if you remain faithful, he will eventually give you understanding. That's why the verse says, lean not to thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path in that walls. God has a purpose, God has a plan for every believer, but we've got to be in sync with the will of God, not to sync with the will of man. Amen, walls. God can feel all where they were setting because they were in unity. Unity is important. Unity rules out everything that's not in agreement. Unity rules out everything that's not willing to work together. Unity rules out everything that's not willing to come in agreement. Unity rules out compromise. You don't compromise minds when you're in unity. You don't compromise when you're in unity because you're in agreement. When you're in unity, the adversary can't get in. Because your mind is set and geared toward God. Your mind is set and geared toward purpose and destiny. When you're in unity, the adversary can't intervene. He can't interfere because you've got your mind made up that the Lord, uh, you know, God has given me an order of instructions. He has positioned me in a place where I know that if I stay in this place, I'm eventually going to see victory in my life. I'm going to see victory in the lives of those that are around me because we're in unity. We're not putting one another down. We're not talking about one another, but we're praying and we're exalting one another. We're lifting each other up. Why? Because unity says that we must be in unity and we must be in agreement. How can two walk together except they agree? How can husband and wife walk together except they agree? How can son and daughter walk together except they agree? How can the body of Christ walk together except they agree? If you notice in the church today, there's not much agreement. That's where unity comes in. That's why Jesus says, I can't come until you all get in unity. In other words, you got to stop thinking about your plan and understand it's my plan. you got to stop thinking about your will and understand it's my will. You gotta stop thinking about what you want and realize that I are thank you for my purpose, for keep the purpose. Then you begin to get in unity. Then people begin to see when you're a pioneer, one thing you have to understand about a pioneer is he don't follow others. Because he gotta teach you how to get in unity. He gotta teach you how to get on one accord. He gotta teach you how to follow the voice of God and not the voice of man. Amen. Walls. In other words, it's not about apostles. I'm here for a season, and when my time is up, whether my work is done or not, guess what? God's going to call me home. And when I don't finish trailblazing, he'll put somebody in the path. They'll say, I remember when Apostle Spade said, do this and do this. And then God says, okay, you pass the test. Now I can release more strokes, more mysteries, more revelations, more knowledge to you. Why? Because you're ready to receive and realize that it's about me and not about you. It's about my kingdom and not about what you want to do. Amen, Lord. Look at verse number three. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. That means the Holy Spirit filled the room to the extent that they had that room. If he be over, I say, hear the I hear And this person over here speaking in tongues, and that person over there speaking in tongues, and everybody looking at everybody, but they going in tongues, and they can't speak no English because they're speaking somebody else's language. The power of God filled the room to the extent that it began to shift who they were. When the power of God fills the room to the extent that it begins to shift who you are, you won't speak in your own language. You won't have no control of your own language. Every time you hear that, 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 that,
You don't have authority now. God's done shifted who you are. He changed your mind and you don't even realize you've been changed. He's still trying to figure out what's going on with you. What's happening is he's changing you. What's happening is he's shifting you. He's changing who you are. That's why you can't do what you used to do. That's why when you look back, you say, ah, keep your eyes forward. He won't let you look back. He won't let you go backwards because I'm carrying you to a greater place in me. I'm carrying you to a greater authority in me. So that's why there's a shift. That's why there's a change. That's why you begin to speak. And all of a sudden you feel like you're about to burn up. That's a fire. You feel like you are. I'm, I'm, I'm burning up. I'm, 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 I'm on fire. Holy Ghost burns. It sets you fire. It changes who you are. It burns out all impurity. It burns out all in holiness. It burns out all ungodliness. It burns out all unrighteousness. It makes you real. Amen. Walls. It shifts who you are. Because God has a greater purpose. He has a greater plan. And when he has a greater purpose and a greater plan, he changes your mind. He changes your heart. He changes your character. He changes your intellect. He changes who you are so you can become who you are doing you to be. It's not about who you walk with. It's about walking with me now, God says. It's about doing what I want you to do now, God says. It's about what I want to carry you now, God says. It's not about what you want. It's about what I want. Amen. Walk. Not about how you feel. It's about how I feel. I feel like being the crazy guy, so I'm going to make you look crazy for a while. Amen, walls. People going to think you lost your mind for a while. People going to think you out of, out of touch for a while. Why? Because I'll shift you to that place. I'll take you to that place. Why? Because I can. Because I'm God. And I do with you what I choose, what I want. Amen, walls. And it's set upon them. Each of, uh, and it's set upon each of them, the last part of verse number three. And it's set upon each of them. Now, notice something. There was so much fire in that room that God could single them out. That I know that the Holy Ghost could set on each one of them. That's how you want the Holy Ghost. You get your measure, 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 you get your measure. Everybody got their own measure. So now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, if you got your own measure, that means you got your own assignment. Notice they spoke in different languages, they spoke in different tongues. So in other words, I'll give you Holy Ghost for the Jew. I'll give you Holy Ghost for the Gentile. I'll give you Holy Ghost for the Hispanic. I'll give you Holy Ghost for the African American. I'll give you Holy Ghost for the Caucasian. See, they all had their own language. For the Chinese, for the Korean, for the Japanese. The word says they were all in one place. Every nation. Uh -oh. God ordained that every nation was in the upper room. But guess what? The nation was in the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost spoke every nation. He said, I ain't just for the Jews, but I'm for the Gentiles. I ain't just for the Gentiles, but I'm for the Greek. I ain't just for the Greek, but I'm for the Hispanics, the Koreans. I'm for Afro-Americans. I'm for Chinese. I'm for uh, Japanese. I'm for uh, Pakistan and Pakistanians. He said, I'm even for the Muslims. They don't know it yet, but I'm for them too. Right. Amen, walls. Look at verse number four. And it says that they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. All right. Now that's the word you don't hear in church no more. All right. You might hear Holy Spirit. You might hear the Spirit of God, but they don't say the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost brings a shift. The Holy Ghost brings a change. The Holy Ghost brings a shaking. The Holy Ghost makes you who God ordained your life to be. Amen, Lord. See, there's a greater measure and a greater impartation to the Holy Ghost. I ain't never going to say the Holy Spirit. It's all holy. But it's just something about that Holy Ghost. He does things as unexplainable sometimes. He does things as unimaginable sometimes. Amen, Lord. The Holy Spirit brings a shift. The Holy Ghost brings a shifting and a change. But the Bible says they were all filled. That means beyond capacity. That means every crevice. That means every crack. That means seed. That means root. That means fruit. That means everything inside of you, the Holy Ghost began to occupy. When you feel, you can begin to release. It's kind of like a poor man giving somebody what he has and he don't have much. But when you feel, you can release and you can share. Because see, when you feel, that means you, you don't never run out of capacity. 
See, you just get my reserve. In other words, you get the overflow. In other words, I'm filled to the extent I just walk by you and the Holy Spirit just bless you real good. Why? Because I'm filled. That's where you want to be. You want to be in that place where you feel it says, and it's filled. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them others. Listen, saints, it's so important that, 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 that part right there is so important that you understand. You speak with the Holy Ghost speak. All right. You speak when God speak. You don't speak when you want to speak. You don't speak because the Holy Spirit spoke in your spirit. You speak because he said open your mouth and speak. How do I know when the Holy Spirit tells me to speak? Because I don't want to speak. Because I don't open my mouth and say anything. And if he don't nudge you, you keep your mouth closed. But when he nudge you, and you walk away and he say, go back. Then you, you can speak. Why? Because he said, I want this message released in the now. I want this word I put in your spirit released right now. I don't want it released next week. I want it released right now. Amen. Walls. There's a measure that you get to, to that place. It's not all man. So let me take you something. It took me many years to get to the place where I was still, when I should open my mouth and when I should keep my mouth closed. It didn't happen overnight. It took many years through walking and building a relationship with God to understand now is the time I need to release a word to you. Many times I got on the elevator and the Lord began to speak to me about people. I couldn't release a word right then, but God allowed them to cross my path later. He said, now give it to them. They ain't ready for it yet. I'm just telling you now. You got to understand that when God releases to you, you got to hold on to it. You may have to sit on it for a season. Amen, walls. Because if you release the word out of time and out of season, you can send somebody off course. Remember, every time they release a word, it's a new impartation and it's a new activation. Not only that, but it puts them in a new season. Because they forget about where they are now. You don't think you're going to get a lot of you tomorrow. You won't think about being poor ever again. Because you've just been shifted to a new season. You start thinking about all the things I'm going to buy. All the things I'm going to do. Lord, I need some shoes. You start thinking, thinking about all the people you get ready to bless. Like that young lady was doing the other day on Facebook. She was talking about everybody she was going to do something for. But what I loved about everything she said, she said, I'm going to pay my tithes. She, in other words, she said, I'm going to pay my tithes first. Then I'm going to do everything else. See, when God bless you, you can't, get, you can't forget about his house. You can't forget about, you can't, you can't forget about purpose and destiny. And that walls. It's important, saints, that they were in unity, number one. They were on one accord, number two, or number one. And the Holy Ghost can fill the room. Now, let me tell you something about the Holy Spirit. You go to a lot of places and there's no Spirit of God, there's no anointing, there's no Holy Ghost. Because the people are not in unity, they're not seeking the very presence of God. Amen? Amen. You got to seek God in order to get His presence. You got to seek the Holy Spirit. That's why I have you come here and pray before service start. So that the atmosphere is set for the presence of God. Now, no foolishness. Amen, walls. But so that the presence and the power of God, the miracle anointing, the signs and wonder anointing, can begin to fill the atmosphere, can begin to shift the atmosphere, so that the people that desire, the people that are really needed for God, can receive from God. Amen, walls. And they were all filled, the Holy Ghost says, with the Holy Ghost, and they began to speak with other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them others. Now, so I see you read that one time. I'm reading it so you get it. Notice the word says, and they. That meant they had to be in unity. They had to be in one place. And God could fill the room. It says in verse number five, and they were dwelling at Jerusalem, devout men out of every what nation under heaven. Now, catch this. Everybody in the upper room was on one accord. But not only that, but in Jerusalem, they were devout men from every nation. See, God says, I got something for all y'all today. Not just y'all that's in the upper room. But y'all that's outside dwelling and visiting Jerusalem. 
See, when God has a purpose and he has a plan, he sends the Holy Spirit down to Jerusalem. To the upper room where Jesus told the apostles to go and stay there until the comforter comes. Notice he didn't say go and come. But he said go and stay. Problem with many believers is they can't get the Holy Spirit because they go to church here today and they go to church there tomorrow and they go to church there next week and they go to church there the next week and they go over here the next week and they go over there the next week and every time the Lord had to ask the Lord where should I go, the Lord tells them where to go and they go somewhere else. And then they wonder why I'm not changed. Why I'm not shifting. Why I'm not growing. Why I'm not developing. Why is it? But if you look at the people that's growing, you find they're in one place. You find, even though they might not want to go, guess what? They go anyway. Even though they might not want to stay, guess what? They stay anyway. Why? Because their impartation is in obedience. Jesus told the apostles to go to the upper room and stay there. But guess what? It wasn't just the apostles up there in that upper room. There were other folk up there too. But in order for them to get this measure, now catch this, in order for them to get the measure of the Holy Spirit that God was getting ready to release in the upper room, they had to be obedient. They had to be in one place. They had to be in one mindset. They had to be in unity. But the Holy Spirit comes in verse number five because he already knows that they're were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men, out of the religion. The Holy Spirit already knew who was there. He knew this impartation was for everybody. Oh, wait a minute, hold on. But everybody didn't get it, but everybody saw it. Everybody saw it. He set them up, everybody saw the men of God speaking in their own tongue, their own language, their own nationality. They saw the Holy Spirit using them to speak their language. They identified that they were of that nationality. So these men are not Jews. These men are not Greek. These men are not Chinese. They're speaking our language from the country we were born in. That's a vision. That's a vision. When you stand in front of somebody, the Lord can give you somebody else's name. That's a vision. When the Lord can allow you to speak in somebody else's name or somebody else's tongue, that's a vision. And they hear you talking and they can hear and understand everything you say because you're speaking in their tongue and in their language. How many times do you ask that to shift your tongue? Amen. Walls. Do you know there are many tongues? There are many measures of tongues that the Holy Spirit will give you. He won't just give you one tone. But when the time comes, he'll shift your tone. He'll give you a new tone, a new measure, a old fire tone. Sometimes you just get the first measure. And you try to push that a little bit out. But all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit will come in and he'll fill the vessel. And it'll begin to flow out of you like a river. You better like, uh, you, you, you ever seen somebody begin to speak with tongues the first time? They be like, I live, 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 I live. It's like a car trying to stop. He said, let it flow. 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 What's happening? They say, trying to let it flow. Then you say, tell them, Lord. They are ready to go. He said, let it flow. 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 They still trying to start that agent. But after a while, it begins to flow on that. And then the more they do it, the greater that anointing comes when they release. Because then God fills you to capacity. That's why it's so easy for you to just let loose. It doesn't matter where you are. You can walk in the presence of the anointing and all of a sudden you start speaking. You all of a sudden you start speaking in tongues. You say, Jesus is in this place. Good God Almighty. The Holy Ghost is in this place. Good God Almighty. What did I been missing? The man walks. They spoke with other tongues because the Holy Spirit told them to. He didn't say, leave you speak German. 
Prophet Stakes, you speak German. Prophet McGee, you speak German. Evangelist Avery's, you speak German. Prophet Angela, you speak German. Prophet April, you speak German. No, I don't want to say it. Chinese, Japanese, Korean, French, Hispanic. That's what he said. He gave each one of them a different tongue, a different language. So men got him speaking in their tongue. And learn something about God. He has a great sense of humor. Because you might speak Chinese five minutes and then turn around and speak German five minutes later. Ain't nothing wrong. See, God has a great sense of humor. And they were just speaking Chinese, but now they speaking English. That's why so many people can speak so many languages and so many nationalities. But, uh, Check the Pope's out. Have you ever noticed a the Pope? They speak sometimes nine different languages. And American is not one of the favorites. When they read, you listen to them when they read the when they read the, uh, 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 their lesson, the studies. They don't speak English. They read from other languages. And that holds. Although we have American candidates, there is none of us the Pope speak English. And that holds. That was free, I won't talk to you for it. God has a purpose in every mention of the Holy Spirit, in every mention of the anointed. He has a purpose and he has a plan. And it's important that we as believers understand that God has a mention of the anointed that he wants you walking in. But you've got to be willing to die to self in order to get the next mention. Can somebody tell me what the five measures were? I released them the other night. Can somebody tell me what measure? The ankle. The knee. The knee. The waist. What's the next one? I, I, it's, it's one before they emerge, though. The chest. And then they emerge or submerged. Those are the measures. Some people like the ankle alone. Some people like the knee alone. They just want to wade in the water. They don't want to go no further. They can take where they are. They don't want to excel any further. Lord knows they'll let it get up to the breast or the chest. They got serious problems. Lord, that's just about to, oh, something's wrong. I never felt like it. I never felt like this before. You can tell, you tell the Holy Ghost when they start. What is that? Jesus. Oh Lord. People looking at me getting me straight. <laughs> Trying to get it off. Ooh. You see a little Why? Because the Holy Spirit done took over. But then when he's emerged, you come out looking new. You don't even look like your old self no more. You look like a totally different person. Why? Because God has changed who you are. He's shifting you to another place, another plateau. Although you don't want to die, he kill you, and you get back up. You rise with that old mindset. I know church was good today, but I know I got saved today, but I ain't ready to be saved. You get that old, you go reach that old mind and grab it back. Put it back in your head. Power of God being enslaved to knock you out, pick you up, knock you out, pick you up, and knock you out again. You get up to a different person and you choose that old mindset. Amen, walls. But what God has in store for you is greater. That's why he's a you. That's why every measure of the anointing, every measure of the Holy Spirit is so important that God shift you. Like I said, when he submerged you, he can put you in the place of overflow. Because see, everything in you now that was like you has been washed. You've been cleansed. That's what the blood does. Uh, the bishop talked about it this morning. The blood cleanses. It washes you. And it makes you a different person. Amen, Lord. That's what God wants with the believer. He wants to wash us. He wants to make us a different person. Not that when people see you, they should see something new about you every time they see you. I get in the presence of people and I just walk by me and say, you've been with the Lord. And I look at them like, how can you tell? I don't say that, but I look at them like, how can you tell? You know, I've been with the Lord. You've been in the presence of God. And how, how can you tell? I know I have, but how can you tell? 
You got to be in his presence sometime to be able to tell that I've been in his presence. Oh, 